Hello, I'm Psychotic, and that's also my screen name. And today we're doing things I wish I'd known going into Vermintide. So, when you start the game, you can switch your hero here, and you can pick, well, originally just these guys, or these guys, but these as you unlock more. Now, the important part to remember is that is not the only time that you can pick your hero. Once you're in, you have the choice to come over here to the skull, and you can pick your hero here. You can also just hit H, and it will show you. Everything in this room that you use regularly Good evening. has a hotkey. And it will tell you if you come up here. Like, this guy's P, this over here is O, that's M, this is C. And if, uh, if you're doing the... stuff up here, um, you know what, I have used the shortcut so much that I have forgotten how to get there the right way. So the other thing to remember is if you are doing the weaves, that's what they are, if you're doing the weaves, you don't have to run all the way up there to do them. This crack right here is actually a shortcut, it takes you straight there, weave stuff. So you can hit J for the missions or K for your menu. Oh, that's her. It looked like a scave in there for a minute. And then you can actually come right back. The only thing, to the best of my knowledge, that doesn't have a hotkey is the Chaos Wastes. You have to actually walk into those. Um, now, as far as loot goes, and this is very, very important for new players, your best bet is to actually run missions on recruit difficulty until your average item or until your item levels across the board are all level 100 because if you look at your chests you'll get one of these each time you level up and you'll get these blue ones from recruit but if you look they have a max power of 100 whereas these have a max power of 300 so do not open these if your average item level or not average item level if your item level across the board is not item level 100 because otherwise you are wasting what could potentially be a very lucrative source of items later on. And you will kick yourself mercilessly for it. When one of my friends picked up the game, I wanted to implement that because I, I did not save mine. I was unaware of the difference when I first started out. So I had one of my friends start it. And you can get most of the way through the first act before you get to average item level 100. I think we, we did make it all the way to the skitter gate, and I think that we also did, not quick play, we also did the Uber's Reich missions and the Winds of Magic for him. And at that point, he was item level 100 across the board off of recruit chests, and just in the level chests that he had saved up, he was able to open those and make it almost all the way to 150. Or no, it was almost 200, because all of the junk items, you can then use the crafting menu in the inventory by pressing I, and break down the things that you don't want to keep, which gives you materials. And as you can see, I have to do this a lot. Um, these materials you can then use to create whatever you would like. Uh, just crafting an item is only 10 scrap. It's super cheap. Random item outcome. Could be a legendary, probably won't be. Uh, most of the time I get whites or blues. I believe the results are much like chests, where they depend entirely on your hero power level. So chests... Farming chests is kind of awkward. Um, your items that come out of them are based on an equation. So whatever your highest item in a slot is... The items in a chest that happen to be for that slot will be within minus 5 to plus 10 levels of that. So, say you're at item level 215 on your main hand, on, on weapons, and you open a chest. You have the option of, uh, well, you have, you have the chance of it being anywhere from item level 210 to item level 235. Or 25, rather, 10, 10 levels above. So, you can push that by cheesing things uh, with the chests by only opening the item level 100 ones when you're below item level 100. And I saved one just to show you guys. 
Obviously, I'm item level 300 across the board. I really don't need it. Um, so we'll open it, and I'll show you that none of them are above item level 100. 100, 100, 100. So all of those are going straight into scrap. So we're going to break them down. We're going to break, break, break. And that's what we got for it. So I did get a legendary piece, which is kind of nice. Not a complete waste. Now, when you open your chests, not just the item level is important, but the quality of the chest concerns an equation with your uh, hero power to tell the game what rarity to drop. So, for instance, if I were to open one of these Emperor's chests from champion level, I have a very small, I think it's a 6% chance to get a red out of them. Now, that's if I'm above hero level 30. So your item level here is a breakdown, or your hero power is a breakdown of your item level, and it takes your average on this one. So it's your average item level times 10, I believe. Nope, nope, just your average item level. Plus your hero level times 10, that's where the 10 is. So uh, for each level that you gain on your hero, you get an additional 10 points of hero power. So for instance, this guy is level 31, right, I think, so at 610. 31, yes. So when he reaches 35, which is the current cap, it'll be 650. Because that's four levels from now that'll add 40 points. So you don't want to open your really good chests when you're low hero power anyway, unless they're the recruit chests. So the other thing to remember is even if you have an orange equipped, if you roll a white and it's a higher power level, uh, obviously, I can't really demo that because all of my people are rocking level 300 stuff across the board. But the difference in hero power, because it affects damage dealt, the number of enemies on cleave and stagger, it doesn't matter what rarity it is until it hits level 300. Everything under 300, you just want that highest power level. That is all you want. Uh, that th An extra 10 points in power level is going to be more beneficial than 4% crit chance or whatever you happen to have on the piece. There are some very, very rare exceptions to that, and even then they don't scale very well. Uh, if you have an orange, like, let's see here, we'll go to... Let's go to her. So if I had the uh, javelin that had on headshots save an ammo because it only has six ammo that's huge provided you can su successfully get headshots regularly um but if i had that and i something drop that's a white that only had five more uh hero level or power level on it then i would not change because that five power level difference is not going to make up for running out of ammo um now, if it was 15 power level difference, all right, I'm sorry, I love the legendary, but I gotta pass. Because that is going to make a significant difference in hero power. Did I not finish her off? She should be at... Ah, uh, there's a trinket that's not... Okay. What's that? Shrapnel? And what's that? Also shrapnel. Why do I have two shrapnels? Well, that's silly. Okay, there we go, 610. That's much better. The other thing to remember is... For equipment, everybody can equip the same piece. So if you look at this, it should tell me who all has it equipped. The Unchained, the Waystalker, the Grail Knight, under items equipped on. So I've got it on a crap ton of different people right now. And that's fine. That is perfectly fine. The one thing that you can't do that with across classes is weapons. Now, I can have my Wayfarer, this person and my Sisters of the Thorn have the same sword and dagger equipped. That is perfectly allowable. But I can't say equip a sword and dagger on Gruber. It won't let me do it. Gruber. I don't know why I keep calling him Gruber. So they only have access to the weapons that, they're, that they have. And even then, like this is for Huntsman, I can't equip bows on this guy. This guy has two melees. So, and, and that leads me to another very important part in weapons in particular is what, know your weapon types. 
know what they do. Um, this has several swings that are wide. So if I attack, wide swing, wide swing, so on and so forth. So that is very important for clearing hordes. Whereas, since I'm stuck with two melee, I took the Executioner Sword because the power attacks are overhead. So they're single target, which means they do more damage to bosses. So, horde weapon, boss weapon. And then obviously that is designed for single target and just wrecks bosses. But as far as these go, once you hit level 300, then you want to start opening other chests. Now, you're not losing out on XP by running missions on lower difficulties. That's something that the game doesn't tell you, and I really wish I'd known ahead of time. You get the same XP regardless of difficulty level. So if I run a mission on Recruit, and I get all of the chests, or all of the uh, tomes and all of the grims, and finish the mission, I'll get around 1300 XP. Now if I do that on Veteran, I will also get around 1300 XP. Same thing if you do it on Champion or Legend. And I do know that because, as you can see, that has been completed on Legend, that has been completed on Champion, like I've, I've been around. So you, to make life easy for yourself, run on Recruit. It is going to be the fastest XP game, particularly in the beginning. Don't make it harder for yourself for no reason. And that's going to give you the chests that you want to get the results that you want as quickly as possible on item level. Now, once you have item level 100, you should, on, on every item, you should no longer be running any of those missions on Recruit. You should switch entirely to at least veteran and honestly I would stick on veteran until you have around item level 300 because that's still going to be quicker missions because they are easier missions how is that not uncomfortable oh well. um, one of the other things that I wish it had told me if you notice I am set up for private games which means it's just me and bots Unless a friend joins, which I only have one friend that plays the game, so that's not likely. <coughs> when you're in your hero selection, you can shift your bot order. There's a button down here, Manage Bot Hero Priorities. So this is the order of importance for them. So she will virtually never be selected. The same with him. Because if I am by myself, it's going to wind up being one of these three. Or all of these three. So... There are builds to maximize the AI for the bots, and there's a gentleman that's got a website based, or a, a Steam post based entirely around that, and I will link that in the description. Um, I tried his builds. I, Whenever I look up builds for heroes, for, for bots, for, for anything, for any game, I do them to the letter by the original poster, play it a few runs, see how it feels, and then I tweak it for my playstyle or reject it if it doesn't fit my playstyle at all. Um, and I suggest that everybody do that. Yes, something may be the quote-unquote best DPS. On paper, it may have the highest potential for damage. But if it doesn't match your playstyle, if you can't hit the windows, if you can't get the iframes, if, if you can't make it work the way it's supposed to work, it's not the highest DPS because you can't get it to work right. And that's fine. That is absolutely fine. That just means that you need to adjust it to where it does fit your playstyle or reject it for some other build that does more fit your playstyle. Um, the other thing is to understand why builds do what they do, and that helps quite a lot. Now, once you have your order here figured out, you can right-click to change what hero they come in on. So it is important, if you want to run with bots regularly, if you want to play by yourself, to mix it up and play multiple classes because you want them to come in with skills. They come in just absolutely default if you don't. So if we look, I have this guy set up as a bot, and I play him. So that's not a big deal. So you look at your talents. I have a talents set up to where they fit both him and me. For instance, the gentleman that does the builds tells you to take Booming Taunt. 
<coughs> and his reason for that is that the radius is bigger and it uh, decreases the cooldown or increases the duration, which leaves you less downtime because the bots are less than optimal with their use of class skills. Now, I run Dragazi Oath instead because it increases the attack power of nearby allies. I have CC. I have CC out the wazoo on my bots. I don't need the extra taunt. I am a capable enough player that I can look out for myself. So I switched him over here to give the whole group more damage. Now, that's fine for me, but that might not work for everybody. If you need him to taunt things because you're getting overwhelmed, this might be a better choice. If you don't, this might be a better choice. You might even go with this one because it forces monsters, the big ones, to attack Barden. Now, that is something that I struggled with choosing between these two because I deal enough damage on most of the people that I'm playing that the monster is usually up my butt, um, especially when compared with bots. But I feel like that extra attack power makes me drop the monster faster, and that is more beneficial because the faster it dies, the less chance of me getting hit. But that's just one example. Um, the dual hammers is a nod to me. Uh, as a bot, you really want them using axe and shield for the higher damage on him, and the shield for bigger shield bash. I give him the dual hammers because that's what I like to use as a tank, because it just sends enemies absolutely flying all over the place, left and right. There are some gems that he had in there, though, like use the handgun, and he has break points on when to use the crossbow, when to use the handgun, based on difficulty. Because there are certain mobs that you have to headshot on the higher difficulties with the crossbow, or it won't one-shot them. Whereas the handgun probably will. Uh, there, and he does have the exceptions, things that won't be one-shot by the handgun. But knowing that, I just built it for Cataclysm, because if it works on Cataclysm, it'll work on everything else. But if you don't have a decent handgun, you can go with the crossbow. You just got to keep the difficulty a little bit lower. <coughs> now, the, the AI doesn't maximize. The problem with the hammers is they are great for AoE crowd control. They throw mobs left and right. Every time you hit them, they have huge impact on them. But when you get to bosses, you need to heavy attack. And the AI doesn't like to heavy attack on vanilla. Now there are mods that you can use that make the hammers work perfectly fine on bots, but I don't want to mod mine, so my I'm losing damage by having the bot use the dual hammers, but I'm gaining utility. And then there are things like, I really don't like playing the Sister of the Thorn, but the AI does a wonderful job of it. Much better than it does on Wayfarer, because I absolutely wreck with the Wayfarer, and the AI does not. So... <laughs> so the AI gets Sisters of the Thorn. Now, I leveled it, one, because I, I'm a perfectionist that way, a completionist, I wanted to level everything, but also, specifically so that I could use her as a bot with her build here. So with this bow, and this is great for AI, she has unlimited ammo. The Moonfire bow does not run out of ammo. You can shoot all friggin' day until that bar gets empty. And then you have to wait for it to fill back up, at which point you would switch. And then you can just go back to... But the AI is phenomenal on managing that. I am not. So I don't use her. Uh, the class skill, that sends mobs flying, particularly elites. I really wish I could pick up the strength potion. Oh, that's not a strength potion. <coughs> From the bottom, it looks like one. <coughs> uh, this guy, I have the best luck. Salt Spire. So you... And then you've... That is... This is the bot. So the reason that you have the bot with this is it actually only takes half of a shield when you shield bash, and they do that a lot. I don't do it nearly as much as I should. I'm kind of a dodge whore. I run this guy. So I've got these for bosses and small groups, and these for big hordes, because if you do that at headshot level, 
you just decimate hordes, even on the higher difficulties. I mean, look at that. But anyway, that's getting into build territory, and we don't want to do that. This is things that I wish I'd known going in. So you want hero power as high as possible. That is your main goal. The other thing to remember is your maps. Start with, uh... Start with recruit until you have item level 100 across the board. Once you have item level 100 across the board, switch this up to veteran. And then open, save all of these chests while you're going, including the ones that you get from the, the challenges. You want to save the chests in here as well. These guys. Oops. Um, the other thing to remember once you are to a point where you can o where you want to open these is you should always have your highest level character open them because the chances of what comes out of them are based on your uh, average or your your hero power and your item levels off of this. So the item level item power of an item that comes out of the chest is going to be between minus five and plus ten, like I had said. But also, the rarity is going to depend on the quality of the chest and your hero power. If I were to open these Emperor's chests on a level 10 character, it would still be mostly whites, even though they're Emperor's. Whereas if I were to, say, open them on somebody who's over 30, it's a whole lot of oranges and blues. Now, the other thing to remember is what I did just there opening more than one at a time, the open five down here versus the open one, do not open more than one at a time until you are at item level 300. Because when you open them is when that calculation is run for the minus five to plus 10. So if you're opening two, then they are, if say you have an item level 200 weapon and you open two. So you have a chance on the first one of it being between 195 and 210 and you have a chance on the second one of it being between 195 and 210 because it doesn't consider the first chest it opens them all simultaneously now if you open them one at a time then you have an opportunity between 195 and 210 say so you get one at 207 now when you open that second chest that you have now you have a potential between 202 and 217 so you can spike your your score higher faster and the reason that we open on higher level characters is to get better rarities because it is often less important what you get out of the chest than it is what components you can get for breaking it down the higher the rarity the more scrap you get per item whoops i forgot to get a hold of it so see i got 18 scrap for those items now if you open a bunch of whites you're only going to get one a piece and the toolkits you'll get less of. So when once you have all of your chests open, you're going to go ahead and craft the weapon type that you want. What you get out of the chests is more or less irrelevant. If you get the weapon that you're using, awesome, but you're probably not. Um, so you open your chests, you break them down, and then you craft what you actually wanted. Now, when you craft, it does the same role that it does for a chest. So say 300 wasn't the cap i'm at 300 if i were to craft this I, I have the potential to get between 295 and 310 now unfortunately because 300 is the cap i have the opera i have the potential to get between 295 and 300 so it is very frustrating at the top tier because crafting something see there's a 298 299 that's three that's three that's three what are all of these Auction, boon, and proxy. We want to keep those, and we'll keep that too. So that can get very frustrating if you just can't get that item level 300. The other thing to remember is not to just keep crafting for for uh, legendaries. You can actually upgrade an item's quality right here, and I can actually show this because yellow is not the top. So if I had more reds, I could upgrade this to a red. Now that's something that they don't tell you as well. So whites have no special properties. Greens have one special property. Uh, they call them properties. Blues 
have two special properties and oranges have two properties and a boon? I'm not entirely sure. Trait. Two properties and a trait. So reds are the same as oranges. They have two properties and a trait. The way that they differ is one, they have better skins. Of course they do. Um, but they will always roll max value. So if you see here under properties, I have a 3% crit chance on a roll between three and 5%. Now I wanted crit chance and attack speed. So I'm not going to sit here and roll this for six hours trying to get max on both of them. I'm going to wait until I can upgrade it to a red and then it will automatically roll top values. So all that I have to do is cycle it until I get the two values that I want. And that is the, the true benefit of reds. Now you can always upgrade your quality. So if you roll, a, if you craft a white and it's power level 300, usually I just say screw it and upgrade it. But I also have a crap ton of crafting materials because I've leveled everybody all the way up. I mean, we've got 31, 31, 31, 31, 33. She does look good. It's a shame the Pyromancer's not, or the Battle Wizard isn't all that great. The Unchained is friggin' amazing. But that's a different story. So that's the important part. You can change by right-clicking who you want while managing properties and right-clicking, and you can shift order. That's actually how I got a different loadout here than is normally default. Then when you run missions, you can change who you want to pick something up by holding down T. So holding down T is how you get to this menu, and it's also how you get to your emotes. Now if you hold T in a mission on something, like a chest, then it would come up with a menu of who you want to, to pick it up. Well, I guess a chest is a bad idea. Um, but uh, items. So if there's a potion, and you already have one, you can make one of the bots pick it up. And that is super helpful. And the difference with their builds is phenomenal. Because they have traits. So they get to keep whatever traits you last used on that class if that class is your bot. They use the same equipment that you have on that class if that class is your bot. That's where the important parts come in. So this build works equally well for both me and the bot, which is phenomenal. But for most of the others, I don't actually play what the bot is. On Kruber, I never play this guy. I always play this guy. But the bot uses this guy better. I never play Sister of the Thorn. I play the Wayfarer. But the bot plays the Sister of the Thorn better. Now, there is a build for the Wayfarer as a bot. But it is less effective than Kruber, so it moves down here. So at that point, I would have to shift these in order. And then Kruber does really well as this guy, but I do better as this guy. Now, both the bot and I do better on this one, but the build is completely different. And uh, the bot does not do as well on this as it does on the other characters, so I just left it as my build, said so screw it. So that is the breakdown of bots and items and why we do what we do. Now, you get the same XP out of missions. I believe I already said that, but I can't iterate that enough. You get the same XP out of missions regardless of what difficulty they are. So until you're item level 300, do yourself a favor and keep the, the, the levels low. Keep them on recruit till you're 100 across the board, then switch it up to veteran. Don't go back down to recruit because it's a waste of your time. Um, once you have item level 300 across the board, play for fun. And I mean, obviously it's a game. You can always play for fun, but we're looking for optimal stuff here. Things I wish I had known going in. And emotes can be particularly fun. There's also a neat one down here. If you use the lean while you're plastered face first into here. You lean on the pillar. <laughs> now, as far as fades or weaves go... It's the same thing. So you click down here to actually pick your weapon, 
And weapons that you don't have unlocked yet are a thousand. So that's how you get your item, and then you have to upgrade your item individually, each one giving you another slot in which you can pick your traits. So you can basically handpick your perfect orange out of this. Now, these are obviously going to be the most important, so that you can get your build down. And you can see I've got some here that don't have anything in them because I don't have them unlocked yet. So one of the things that doesn't tell you about weaves is you need to upgrade this to, to get your traits. You get a trait at each five levels, just like normal game. And then you get these at the off levels, including your legendary effects here. This is kind of hidden up here. So upgrading this is how you get these. So that's, that's very important, and I wish it had shown me that. Um, when you do weaves, if you do the ranked weave number one, you will start getting the, uh, what's it called, essence? Yep, you start getting essence out of normal missions. It's not very much, but that shit adds up, because we run a lot of missions. So... It is very, very beneficial to get your first ranked weave done as soon as you can. Now, that being said, there's an effect on there that lowers your maximum health and increases your attack speed until the uh, uh, until you stand next to pylons, which then reset it backwards. Um, the very end event is to slay a bile troll. Now, I did this with Barden because I was struggling with the early part, and I really wish I had just waited until I finished off a build on somebody else. Um, so what you want to start with are your quick plays. So quick play on recruit is going to get you the same amount. Well, it gets you about half what you get on veteran, but it's very, very difficult with crap weapons to do on veteran. So you run on recruit and you get about a thousand a run. So two runs will get your weapons for class. And then you can run a few more until you get to where you want to be to take down that bile troll. And I wish I had known that ahead of time. I would not have had such a hell of a fight of it. It, I almost ran the timer completely out trying to get that bile troll killed. I did it, but it was it was hell. Um, I just didn't do enough damage with the twin hammers for a boss. Survived the horde just fine. So when you run ranked events, you do not get bots and nobody can join you. You only get who was with you when you queued it. Now for the quick play, you can join other people randomly or you might if you don't then you get bots which makes these way easier to get your points to upgrade your stuff as you also when you upgrade it not only unlocks these for instance this comes at item level four which is my next one but it also increases your item power so my next level will give me plus 30 power and as we were talking hero power is everything there's no damage on weapons. That's because it's derived from your hero power. Um, but the same thing also goes here. You want to set up the stats on each one of your possible bots to make sure that they are helping you in the weave. Otherwise, you basically just have cannon fodder. And that is, that is not useful. Cosmetics are obviously very, very important. Trials. I mean, the game is all about cosmetics. That's that's their their biggest. Oh, huh, apparently I already claimed that one. Well, there's no accounting for taste. That's their biggest draw. The other thing is these picture frames in here are based on things that you have unlocked. So you can actually change what picture is in each of these. When Nurgles. And there's a bit of lore on each one. So everybody's keep will look a little different. I'm nosy when I join somebody's game. I run around and see what they've got up in their keep. Just to see. So for combat, one of the things that I wish I had known, blocking is great. But with the stamina system being so stingy, it is not the best. 
In the higher difficulties, you're going to have to block push to keep things away from you. In the lower difficulties, side dodging is really your best option. It doesn't take stamina, and you can do it while you're attacking. So you can side dodge your way around a group while you're fighting them. And that's usually how I stay alive. Now, if you're after just XP... Oh, right. So before we get into XP grinding, you want to do all of Helmgart on Recruit. Your next play should be Winds of Magic on Recruit. That will open up the weaves. So that gives you optional other gameplay. You also get XP for your character through weaves, but that's not the main goal of them. Then you want to do Back to Uber's Reich, all three of these, because and you want to do those on each character because doing all three of these on a character unlocks a weapon for them. It's very important. And there's a hidden rune in each one. If you get all three runes, it opens up a fourth level. I obviously do not have mine. I only have one of the three, I believe. They're kind of a bear to get, and I just haven't been bothered yet to finish it. I'm still working on the caravans. I have the last one to do. Every time that I've run it with a group of pugs, we get right up to the end. And then we wipe. So I need to figure out a way. I might just take bots. A lot of times with the right build on bots, especially if they're all level 30 with good weapons, like mine are, uh, your bots will outperform just your average Joes. Yes, there are always exceptions to that. Sometimes you get an exceptional player. I've been known to join random matches on uh, Veteran just to help people out. Um, I'm sure other people do the same. So every now and then you get a player that is no kidding better than a bot. But for the most part, your bots are going to be better than other players that you encounter. But you don't get that social aspect. So one of the, the rules for Vermintide, especially in missions, is always look out for your group. If you don't have a potion, but you are at three quarters health, and you come across a health potion, and somebody in your group is at a sliver of health, or they have, they've just been picked up, so they only have temporary hit points, let them have the damn potion. Be a group player. This game is entirely co-op. The PvP in this game sucks. So if you're after PvP, this is not the place to be because there is none. <laughs> It's, it's a co-op game. You need to work together. It is all about the group as a whole getting through stuff. If you see a mob running up on somebody's back, don't just keep running by. Kill it! Don't let it hit somebody in the back. This game has a knack for putting mobs behind people. Any damage that your team isn't taking is a benefit to the team. Anybody that's down is DPS that you don't have. So let them have the potion. It's not that big of a deal. And, and if they pick up the potion and decide not to use it, as I've been known to do sometimes, sometimes I'll float on temporary hit points, because most of my characters can generate them very, very well. So if I have a potion, and I haven't downed it, there's probably a reason. Um, but if I s have a potion, and I see somebody else that's struggling, they've gone down twice, I'm worried about them going down a third time because their hit points are low, I'll give them my potion. And with the, the healing r items, it's easy, because you hold right-click on them, and you will wrap them and heal them. But with the potions, if you right-click, you just give them the potion. So sometimes it's beneficial to also tell them that you gave them the potion, because I've noticed in particular a lot of the newer players don't notice. Um, that's not a negative, it just it is what it is. They're not keeping a constant eye at the bottom of their bar, at the bottom of the screen, so they don't know what they have. Um... The default push to talk in this game is G, but I changed mine to V for, for ease of access. So if you give somebody a potion, just give them a heads up. Say, hey man, I, I noticed you were low, I tossed you my potion. Usually you'll get a thank you, they'll drink it and carry on. But it's all about the team. If you have a non-healing potion, if one of the damaging potions, concentration... Oh, that's one of the other things. They don't tell you what those potions do. So concentration is a phenomenal potion. And what concentration does is it fills up your ability bar very, very quickly. So if you put on something that's got proxy, not proxy, not proxy, that spreads the effect to all nearby allies, which is also beneficial. 
If you put on the, the necklace that gives you plus 50% duration, I should have one of those. Not necklace, charm. Concoction. Oh, no, that's all effects. Decanter increases duration of potions by 50%. If you do that with a concentration potion, you can get like three ability uses back to back with your uh, class skill. Very, very useful. Um, speed potions make you not only run faster, they make you attack faster too. Um, strength potions increase strength, and that's not just attack strength. That is ability strength, and that is also bomb strength. So it is very important to drink one of those before you throw a bomb at a boss or at a monster because it will do massively more damage. And then if you have certain other tricks like shrapnel, so if I drink a strength potion, I get an increase in damage. I throw the bomb at the monster. Now he takes that huge damage and he takes 20% additional damage. And if I've got this effect on, it spreads the effect to the nearest ally. So two of us are now beating on him with in increased strength while he's taking 20% more damage. He goes down like a stack of books. It's... I almost said a dirty word. It's very brutal. It is very, very brutal. Synergy is the way to go. Also, stick with your team. A person on their own is going to die on their own. There are multiple monsters... or mo monsters. There are multiple enemies in this game that not only do they tie you up, like you have ones that knock you down and stab at you with knives, you have some that grab you by a hook and spike you, um, you have life leeches that levitate you and drag you towards them, so not only do they tie you up where you can't get away by yourself without help, but they specifically target characters that are not within a certain range of other characters. So if you are off on your own, you are asking to get killed. And yes, it's possible to dodge them. I have gotten the achievement for blocking a, an assassin rat jumping at me. Block pushing an assassin rat jumping at me and then killing him. I have seen life leeches spawn fast enough to kill them. I've heard hook rats in enough time to shoot them down. It is possible to survive on your own, but it is way more effort than it's really worth. Just stay with the group. And I know sometimes it's frustrating. Sometimes you want to move really fast and everybody's just lingering about. Sometimes you want to explore and look for tomes and everybody's run off ahead. But it is important that you stay with the group. You can always run the mission again. It's not a big deal. You're going to wind up running all of the missions multiple times anyway, so it's really not a big deal. Um, as far as XP goes, we've talked about how loot works. You need to find a quick mission, and I usually, whoops, I usually default to the Screaming Bell. I can do it very quickly. I know where all the Tomes and Grims are. It's my go-to for XP. Um, it's also my go-to for getting high-quality chests, because I know where all of the things are. Now, I could show you that, but I feel like that's, there are plenty of views out, or videos out there on how to get everything in Screaming Bell very, very quickly. Um... Also remember that you do not have to fight the monster at the end. If you're after chest quality, you want to because you want that loot die. But otherwise, it's not worth your time. Now, as far as getting higher rarity chests goes, the first thing is your difficulty level is going to determine what tier of chest it is. So if you notice, these have a bluish background because they're a purplish background because they're veteran. This has an orange one because it's champion. And this has a green one because it's legend. And then these are just default commendation chests, so ignore their background color. So the chest quality is based on difficulty. So this is a coffer, this is a chest, this is a vault. And they, they all look different. But whether it's a soldier's, a general's, an emperor's depends on performance in the match. So just by doing the match, you get some quality. I think it's half, half of a bar on the bottom. Then, if you did it on quick play, you get another half. If you found all three tomes, you get two. No, it's one and a half. No, I think it is two. It's two. If you get all uh, both of the Grims, it's one and a half. Then if you get loot die, it gives you some. And then you have Renald's. So it is possible to not get the quick play bonus. 
and still at- obtain the Emperor's quality. Uh, but it applies on that dirty bastard, Renald. And that is a luck-based roll. It, I don't remember what the exact values are, but they go from basically a little sliver to possibly three quarters of a bar. So if he's being favorable, you'll get your emperors. If he's not, you will not. <laughs> and that's that's ultimately what it runs down to. Now, if you have at least two loot die, if you have, I think, it's a two or three. You need two or three loot die to guarantee it. The quick play bonus, all of the grims, and all of the tomes... Renald doesn't matter. Um, you will automatically get the, the the highest tier. But if you don't do quick play, which I very rarely do if I'm farming chests, because it takes too long, and most of the maps getting the tomes is a bear with strangers. So I, I only really run for chests either by myself or on a specific map where I know I can get them all. And you want that to be quick. Uh, for XP, you kind of want to do the same thing. So I've run Screaming Bell I don't know how many times. It is absurdly quick if you know what you're doing. Um, just watch a video, try it for yourself. It's not that hard. That's It's one of the faster maps because it doesn't really have any of the choke points. Like, you don't have to defend a point or anything like that. But these are the things that I wish I had known coming into this game. I hope that they have been useful for you. If they have, please like and subscribe. And we will see you next time.